This conference will now be recorded. In attendance tonight, we have Thomas Vitale, board chairman, Robert Avery, board member, Carl Bonamico, board member, Shelby Jackson, town assessor, Kevin Coons, chief appraiser, and Shelley Hemingway, recording secretary. We're gonna do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, we had minutes uh, from the last meeting uh, that were attached to approve. Do I hear a motion concerning those minutes? Make a motion to approve prior minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And again, there's minutes attached today for the March 17th meeting. Um, so please uh, review them next week. Uh, you know, we'd like to make sure we get all the minutes approved before we uh, wrap up the meetings. Okay, uh, consent agenda. I did see that in here, is that? Yes, it's it is in there, Mr. Chairman. Um, should be. Yes, I have it a is. Copy in front of me. Uh, page twelve, board members of the of the agenda is the consent agenda, and there's two pages. And the assessor's office has worked with these people on uh, correcting any issues and, and approving. So do I hear something from the, the board concerning this Make consent a agenda? I get a, a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Just for the record, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, so the consent agenda, just a reminder, this is mostly uh, clerical errors and corrections. So it's not like we're not, you know, trying to resolve a valuation dispute with someone. Uh, it's a clerical, it's more in the way of a technical or a clerical correction. Uh, and we just want to pass it through the board while the board is still in session. You, you'll note um, that you approved the consent agenda that's actually going to add over a million dollars to the grand list. We had one very large account uh, that filed late and uh, actually increased their assessment by uh, over a million dollars. Okay. So, Okay, so we're now at item six, discussion and possible action regarding attached appeals. We're gonna be starting this evening with hearing number 2020-151. Carriotter, Carriotti Developers Incorporated. And we have Mr. Thomas Thompson representing uh, Carriotti developers. We do have um, paperwork in here that authorizes you to represent them. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I, I saw it somewhere in all the paperwork. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, uh, with 2020-151, and and it's my understanding that you and uh, Mr. Jackson have worked together on these appeals? That's correct. Okay. 
All right, so let's start with 2020-151. Uh, and this is personal property um, filing. I understand uh, it was not filed, is that correct? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Shelby. Um, what we had done, we had, had conducted a personal property audit of, of, this, of this account, a three-year look back. Um, and the, at, the, at that point, the, the uh, taxpayer was non-compliant. So we estimated what we thought the increase should be. Um, we issued those tax bills. Those tax bills have been, my understanding is that they've been paid. Now the client is coming forward. He has a new certified public accountant. He's coming forward and he wants to redo the audit. Uh, in addition to the audit, we've adjusted the 2020 grand list to reflect the estimates that we had made uh, you know, uh, through the audit process. So when talking to Mr. Thompson, and I'll turn it over to him in, in just a minute here to you know, confirm or deny what I'm saying. You know, to, after talking with Mr. Thompson, I indicated that we were not willing to redo the audit, the three year look back. But what we are willing to do is if uh, if they would supply the proper financial records through this through their uh, through their accountant, that we would agree to conduct a one year audit for the 2020 grand list, and we would adjust that accordingly based on their actual records. And um, Mr. Thompson can add to that if he likes. No, that's correct, Shelby. Um, no. So I guess we're, we're it's kind of a I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make that in, in the form of a motion. I think, um, let me think about this. Because if we withdraw this appeal, then that still leaves the other three audited years left hanging out there. So I think there should be a motion to the effect that um, Personal property audit completed with. Just bear with me, Mr. Chairman, if you would. No problem. Perhaps a motion to the effect that for the for the prior audit that was conducted, no change. However, we're willing to conduct. The town will. The town will conduct. Uh, an audit for the 2020 grand list subject to submission of the financial records of the taxpayer. Is that too long? <laughs> um, uh, not too long. Uh, I don't, I make sure that we, we repeat that. To, uh, um, uh, so we want to be clear that the prior three year audit that was done, uh, no change to those figures. However, for the 2020 grand list, that is now subject to an audit. That's correct. That's, that's, is that better? Okay, Mr. Bonamico, I'm going to hand that to you. <laughs> so I make a motion for that, that for the prior three year audit, there will be no change. Second. Okay, but wait a minute, there's a, there's a second part. And however, we, we will be uh, holding an audit for the 2020 grand list second all in favor aye. aye okay all right so that's um so that's 2020-151 now does that apply to the remainder of these or is each one now a separate discussion appeal uh, let me see here. This is, there's a series of uh, trucks. I think they're all separate. They are all separate. Um, what happened was last yeah. year, Kevin went out and did an you know, extensive review to photographs and everything else. We reduced the value from the book value based upon condition. Uh, this year, for, for some reason, they got increased again. And so we're recommending to the board on all of these vehicles to just put them back to where they were uh, last year. And Mr. Thompson has submitted photographs. I don't know if you've got a chance to look at them. I, I, I have. I have. 
these, these trucks, many of them have, you know, extensive rust and all kinds of damage, and they're just, uh, the, some of them are not roadworthy. They're, they're used for pots. They, and, they so. were never bought brand new. These were used vehicles bought in, in 2013 and 2014. So even the cost of them is around, it ranges from $3,900 to 4000 And that was several years ago. And you can see the but I think I think we jumped I think we jumped ahead to the truck list because 2020-152 okay uh I, I'm not sure it has to do with we use our plate for repair is is uh oh yes you're correct so this one I you know um Again, I'm this sorry is about that. Yeah, I no apologize. Problem. Yeah, I apologize. So 2020-152 20, 20 has to do with uh, dealer plates that are being assessed. I'll let Kevin address that. He's He directly handles that more than I do. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I believe Rhonda picked up this new personal property account. Um, there was a dealer plate on a, a brand new truck, a dually truck. I, I believe it was Ford. And it had Cariati written all over it. Um, so we picked this. Uh, I believe Rhonda picked this up from a dealer plate list that we receive every year from DMV. Um, I don't believe that the Mr. Cariati or the, his business responded or filed a proper declaration to declare that vehicle. So are we talking about the vehicle? We're talking about the plates or Six any whatever business entity that name was in, we didn't get a response. Rhonda sent them, set up a new personal pro a property account for the 2020 grant list. And he either didn't file or filed late or. Okay. Uh, and he's appealing, uh, <clears throat> he's appealing it, placing a market value of $1,500. I'm not sure on what. I, I see the town has six dealer plates. Um, and, and they have a personal property uh, assessment of $37,380. Appellant's estimated market value is zero. Did the appellant file a property, personal property account with the appeal? Well, let me jump in because we, we just voted, the board just voted to conduct an audit for the 2020 personal property account. So this would be a separate issue. You can either assess those plates uh, at the current assessed value of 37,380 or, or some other value as the board may determine. It's a different entity, shall we, though? Okay, so it's a different entity. It's Cariati Truck and Equipment LLC. Correct. All right. Well, then approach it that way. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, um, so it's a different entity. Mr. Thompson isn't necessarily the representative. Uh, correct. Well, I'm representing Cariati Truck Truck and Equipment. And Cariati I don't, Development. I don't and believe that and Cariati Development. And, and yeah, but they didn't file they didn't file the proper paperwork to have the appeal. They didn't file tax returns uh, for uh, Cariati Development. Okay, so so those those appeals probably should be withdrawn from the developers. Well, no, this one is filed by Cariati Truck and Equipment. Okay, that, that's the one I'm really here for. Okay, well, um, I, so, so go ahead. I mean, I, you know, if you're here for that, uh, uh, the, well, the town's position is, you know, um, 
$37,380. Yeah, that, that, that's from, are you looking at my spreadsheet? Yes. Okay, so this is getting very confusing. I'm sorry, this is getting very confusing. Um, the spreadsheet, Mr. Thompson, is going to refer to the Cariotti developers account, which are several motor vehicles. Um, we're talking about um, <clears throat> Cariotti truck and equipment for those dealer plates. Yeah, that's the dealer plates, right? Right. So let me go back to case 151. Case 151, we we the, the board voted to do an audit for Cariotti Developers Inc. Right. Uh, so that audit would not include registered motor vehicles. Um, or or the dealer plates. Or the dealer plates, correct. So we're back to the dealer plate, case 152. And, and the town has determined that Cariotti truck and equipment has six dealer plates. Uh, I don't believe that's true, Mr. Chairman. It looks like we valued, we've estimated the value of that particular vehicle with a dealer plate on it. He may have six, he may have more than that but we've only valued one vehicle based on the vehicle that we saw the plate on. All right, because I'm reading right from the personal property record. Uh, six plates on dealer plate list, 8,500 each. But but you you are declaring uh, uh, personal property of 37,380 for the truck that the, that one dealer plate was on. That's my estimate. I don't have that paperwork in front of me, so Rhonda came up with that value, but I, it's my guess that at least I recall instructing her to just value that particular vehicle. Okay. Okay, do I hear a motion from the board? Well, I, I, can, can, can we hear this case on this one? Do we have enough? Um, <clears throat> the appeal, um, um, puts a market value of $1,500 it, it, by the appellant. Um, I can't really read. We use our plates for repair, two vehicles per year sold. I can't, I can't even read the, we shuffle our body installation customer vehicles to and from. Uh, Tom, I have, I, I have a motion, actually. Okay. I have a motion. I make a motion to reduce the market value to $30,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now 2020-150. This is the list of trucks. So uh, this is where your spreadsheet is, correct, Mr. Thompson? Yes, I think we're showing 37,000 for the, the value that we want versus the 56,000, which you have assessed at. Okay, let me find the list because it, it does make it. Um... You see it? I'm getting there. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of paper here. Or a lot of 
screens. Well, I, I missed it somewhere. Let me start at the top again. Anybody else seen this spreadsheet within all all these? Uh... Yeah, I'm looking myself, Tom. Yeah, because it 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 uh, for each appeal it shows the prior value, which will make our decision in voting easy to uh, go through here. Assume it's loaded in the in the toward the end of all the appeals. I could ask the recording secretary if she knows where it is. I I know it's in here because I looked at it earlier. It's before the photos, maybe page 21, 23. Before the photos? Oh, okay. Page 23, Tom. Okay. Yep. I was looking after the all the photos. So okay. All right. So let's let's work uh, right off of that. All right. Uh, and we're going to start with 2020-150, and we're going to make a motion to change it to. And and this is what now the assessed value, correct? Mr. Jackson, these are all assessed numbers. The, the, the That's correct, Mr. correct. All assessed, all assessed values. That's all correct. All assessed. Okay. So appeal value, assessed value, but uh, we're we're gonna change it to the new appeal value or to the 2018 value. Excuse me, I'm going back and forth. I shut my microphone off. So it should it should correspond to whatever the previous grantless year value was. Exactly. That's that's the value we're proposing. The previous grand grand list value. And and that is the 2018 value on your spreadsheet, correct? Um, I believe so, yes. Okay. All right. Because you you have a little bit different you you are a little bit different but but so let's go to the 2018 value. Do I hear a motion on 2020-150? Yes. 
make a motion uh, to on 202150 to go back to the 2018 value of $3,950 assessment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is 2020-149. I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the value to $3,690 on 2020-149, and that is an assessment value. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one will be 2020-148. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the assessment value to $3,690 for 2020-148. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one is 2020-147. Make a motion to reduce the, the assessment value to $3,690 to 2020-147. Second. All in favor? Aye. Hearing number 2020-146. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $1,760 for hearing number 2020-146. Second. All in favor? Aye. Next hearing is 2020-145. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $2,720 for hearing number 2020-145. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The next hearing is 2020-144. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $3,520 for hearing number 2020-144. Second. All in favor? Aye. Hearing number 2020-143. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $2,720 for hearing number 2020-143. Second. All in favor? Aye. Hearing number 2020-142. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $2,860 for hearing number 2020-142. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing number 2020-141. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $2,860 for hearing number 2020-141. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 2020-140. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $2,860 for hearing number 2020-140. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Last one, 2020-139. Make a motion to reduce the assessment value to $1,850 for hearing number 2020-139. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Mr. Thompson, I think that concludes all the appeals. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Appreciate it very much. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, night. Shelby. Mr. Coons, Mr. Avery, Carl. Yep. You'll receive a notice in the mail. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Shelley. I missed um, hearing number 146. I missed the assessed value. Do you happen to have that in front of you? No, no, I don't. We'll have to go over it tomorrow because this thing is confusing. So we're going to have to straighten it out and make sure we get, we'll help this. 146. 1760. 1760. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll see if I can get our next appellant on the line. Okay. And, and 
Is that Mr. Uh, Di Natale or is that who you look for? Correct. Okay. I'm going to try to get Mr. Di Natale on the line. Okay. Does anybody remember what <laughs> what page uh, those emails were for 202100? Uh, the, the memo? 121, I believe. 121. You're correct. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay.
Mr. Chairman, so I've called everyone, left a couple of messages. Um, we just have to stand by, I guess, until someone calls in. Unless you want to call for okay, unless you want to call for a break or something. Yeah, why don't why don't we break for uh, uh let's see, uh six forty five. About ten minutes. We'll do. We'll do. Okay. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm not sure if I should be here this early or not. You're fine. You're you're uh, you're doing you're doing okay. Let me just see if everybody's here. Okay, I'll stay out. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. Stay right there. Okay. Um, Mr. Jackson, are you back? We took we took a ten minute break, so. Okay. Yeah. He told me he might be running ahead of schedule, so I'll stay no, you're, tuned. You're Thank fine. You. Wait wait two or three minutes, and and uh, everybody should be back. And we'll uh, okay. We'll get right to it. Thank you. still on yeah no, they're waiting for me Okay, I'm back, uh, Tom Shelby. Okay, Kevin, uh, are you there also? Yeah, I'm back, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and uh, I assume Shelley's there also. Hi, Mr. Natale. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're going to go to twenty hearing number twenty twenty dash one hundred.
Okay, Mr. Dean Natale, I'm going to swear you in, and you'll you'll be uh, sworn in for each of the uh, applications. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're going to start with 2020-100, and we have. Um, Mr. Jackson's uh, email to you and your responding email for uh, this property and the remaining seven properties. Yep. And uh, I'd like to thank you for working diligently with the town and, and also for the town, you know, working with you um, to come to a, a mutual agreement on this. So uh, 26 Fair Street, Shelby, do you want, would you like to stay with market values? Shelby, is that? Market That's value good. would be good, yes. Okay. So 26 Fair Street, uh, an agreement has been reached to place a market value of $894,100, $894,100. Agree. Right here, a motion. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the market value to 26 Fair Street to $894,100. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So, I assume the next one. Okay. Uh, let me just let me just go by the list here. 100, 098. Okay, so the next hearing is 2020-098, the Natale Realty LLC, 816 East Center Street. The town and Mr. Di Natale have agreed to a market value of $724,400. Is that correct, Mr. Di Natale? Yes, sir. Can I hear a motion, please? Make a motion for uh, hearing number 2020-098 to reduce the market value to $724,400. Just note that that's a no change, if you would, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Yes. Yeah. And no change on 2020-098. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, all the other ones will be a change. That's the only one that, that uh, there was no change. Okay. Um, 2020-097. Inatali uh, Realty, 350 Center Street. Thank you, motion. Yeah, the Sorry. town of Mr. Dinatali have agreed to a market value of $809,300. Is that correct, Mr. Di Natale? Yes. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, for hearing number 2020-097 to reduce the market value to $809,300. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I don't, I'm not necessarily uh, have they all been reduced, Mr. Jackson, or changed to? They've all been reduced to? Uh, they've all been reduced except for the one that you just voted on prior to, yeah. 816 Center was, was there no change. Everything else is a reduction. A, re a reduction. No, okay. Um, Okay, the next one will be 2020-093, Sand Ridge LLC, 226 North Plains. The town and Mr. Dinatale have mutually agreed to a market value of $890,400. Correct, Mr. Dinatale? Yes. 
make a motion for hearing number 2020-093 to reduce the market value to $890,400. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next hearing will be 2020-095. MD 1068 account, LLC, 1068 North Farms, Building 1. The town and Mr. Di Natale have mutually agreed to a market value of $968,000. Is that correct, Mr. Di Natale? Yes, sir. Okay, I hear a motion. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce on hearing number 2020-095, reduce the market value to $968,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Okay, hearing number 2020-096. MD 1068 account LLC 1068 North Farms Road building number two the town and Mr. Dean Natale have mutually agreed to a market value of $936,600 is that correct Mr. Dean Natale yes okay. make a motion for 2020-096 to reduce the market value to $936,600. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Okay, the next one will be 2020-094. North Plains Realty, LLC. 89 North Plains Industrial Road. The town and Mr. Di Natale have mutually priced a value of $3,098,500. Is that correct, Mr. Di Natale? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion on 89 North Plains Industrial Road to reduce the market value to, to uh, $3,098,500. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, the next one and the last one will be 2020-099 Ives Road, LLC. 20 Ives Road. Town and Mr. Di Natale have agreed to a market value of $2,861,200. Is that correct, Mr. Di Natale? Yes. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion uh, for hearing number 2020-099 to reduce the market value to $2,861,200. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for you working all. with the town. Thank you, Mr. Jackson, for working with Mr. Ian Itali. Uh, you'll be getting updated paperwork from the assessor's office. Great. Have a great night. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> So we have an hour. 
or less. <laughs> so I've called the other appellants, asked them to call in. I'll try to do that again. And okay, well, somebody should call early. I'm sure. I spoke to one party that said at uh, the Circle Drive. I forget the name. Said he can call in, be, you know, by 7:15. He thought. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, see, so we have uh, Mr. Perno with us. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, let me find your case. Okay, we're all here, ready to go again. This is hearing. 2020-138, James Perno, 18 Patrick's Court. I'm going to swear you in, Mr. Perno. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I Please do. go ahead and uh, tell us about your appeal. So I purchased the house in 2019, um, mid 2019, July 2019 for 425. Um, a similar house went at the end of 2019 up the hill, five Patrick's Court for 427. Um, and additionally, I had an assessment done when I purchased the house and it came in at 428 or thereabouts. Um, and it came in at 465 is what you guys were saying the house is worth. Um, unfortunately, I wish it was worth that much, but it's not. Um, and I'm looking for you guys to adjust it down to the sale price for 2019, understanding that there could be some variance, but certainly not over 10%. Okay. Um, Okay, so
based upon your appeal and the town looking uh, at the property, uh, the town has changed the quality of the finished basement and factor land and building for proximity to I-91 I for a new market value of 431000 Sounds fair. Okay. You're good with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce the market value to 431000 Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll get paperwork from the assessor's office reflecting that change. Yes, sir. Thank you guys very much for your time. Thank you. Call All the one, order. please identify. Oh, go ahead. Yourself. Caller one. Okay, we have no idea who's caller one. That's uh, you. That's you. Okay. <laughs> we were asked to call in for 265 Cook Hill Road. What, what is your name? Anna and William McBriarty. It's hearing 137. Right. So this is hearing number 2020 137. Yes. Okay. William and Anna McBriarty. I'm going to swear both of you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay. And you place the market value of $230,000 on the property. Please tell us about uh, your appeal. Um, well, because of the condition of the property. Um, you received photos? We did. Okay. Well, um, my front porch has a seven inch pitch and eight feet. Um, because it's uh, over 100 years old and needs to be replaced. My back porch, um, the boards were rotted and covered with plywood 18 years ago, and that's giving away, so it's, it has another coat on the center. Um, my garage doors are masonite and swollen and have been glued back together, and they're shot. Um, my driveway is basically <laughs> cracked up and equivalent to a gravel about this point because the snowblower picks it up. Um, and my basement hatchway doors are in the condition that you have a picture of. They're basically rotted. We've been trying to hire people for the past two years and we were close to getting to hiring people to do the work for us and then COVID hit. So we're stuck right now. The assessors also were comparing our house to houses that were newly built on the same year as our addition. So it wasn't a, a comparable value. Um, I I don't see that in here. I don't see uh, uh, that's what Jim told us when we went for the first appeal. He said that the prices of the properties he was comparing our property to were the ones that were built uh, on or about 1992 and 1993, and that's when we put the addition on the house. We can't afford to. Okay, so prior to this reval, your your market value that the town placed on the house was two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Were you aware of that? Not on any records that we were given. Well, well, that's 
that's what the asset, the prior assessed value. So the prior assessed value was one hundred ninety six thousand three hundred dollars. Correct. So that, and that equated to a, a market price of two hundred and eighty. Now the town has a market value on it of, of two hundred and ninety three. So. Um, so in prior, you know, the prior the market, value. The market you know, value on the paperwork that we picked up from the assessor's office in the last assessment was two hundred and thirty thousand, and that's why I put that on there because I feel like it. If anything, it hasn't in increased. It's probably with the current market, it stayed about the same. Uh, I, I don't, you know, again. I'm reading right from the town, you know, field card. That the assessed value in in 2018, 2019 was 196,300. Correct. And now it, it was increased to 205,200. That's the amount of that that's the amount of dollars that you pay taxes on. Okay. But that is only 70% of the market value. So the market value went from 280, 428, 293, 100. So, so as as for an increase, you know that's that's within the range that the majority of homes in the last reval um, went up. So. <laughs> with the existing problems my house how could it go up with the issues I have um, well, it, well, the, the majority of the reason why the houses went up in the is because uh, real estate has gone up in the last uh, last year. Yeah, but the uh, real estate has gone up, but last time my house was reevaluated, I my porches weren't in this kind of shape, and to do these porches would be, the prices are unbelievable, so that's why I can't do them, and now they say my house is worth more money. Mr. Chairman? see the logic in that. Mr. Jones. Yes. Um, I'm just looking at the field card and um, Mr. McBride, uh, if you correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like we were not able to take a close look at the property. We visited the property on May 13th of 2020. Um, but so we weren't, and this um, indicates that we were not able to get a close look at the property. So in other words, we had to view from the street. So, so that most, made... most likely that individual came without identification. So I turned them away. We were supposed to get a notice before they were going to be in the area. We did not. And when someone comes to my house and they have no identification, I turn them away and tell them I will call 911 if they can't produce identification of who they are and what the purpose is. And that was the problem. Okay, each one of the data collectors is supposed to carry identification and- I agree, but they did not. It was a younger person that could not produce any ID. Okay. I would be more than glad to make an appointment with somebody because second staff then took a day off to talk to you at this point and arrange to meet somebody here. So really, we're not arguing about the value going up. If we could have made the repairs over the last two years, then I would not have, there would be no argument about the value going up. But because we have not, and Quite frankly, nobody could even get a mortgage if, the, if we tried to put this house in the market because of the repairs, and unless it was going to be a, um, oh, I forgot what they call the mortgages, where, uh, where you have to do construction and show that the repairs are made. Where we're like ready to put caution tape on the porches to not have somebody walk on them for the fear of 
either falling through the back porch or literally having the front porch fall off the house. Okay. I mean, this is why, you know, getting a closer look helps, helps where we are at this point to make adjustments. Uh, uh, so, I mean, we're only operating on what we think we know uh, in. Uh, right. Well, we try to oh. look presentable because we don't want the neighbors to complain about, it, about any blight. Um, so we try to keep everything looking decent, but even when the mailman comes and they try to come up the front porch, we tell them not to. Okay, I uh, I think the board uh, understands uh, from your appeal the situation. Do I hear any uh, motion by the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion uh, to reduce the market value to $286,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So you'll be getting an update, updated uh, paperwork from the, the assessor's office. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Stacy. Let's. Yes, sir. Okay, let me find your appeal. I'll swear you in. Okay, this is uh, appeal number twenty twenty dash oh five eight. Robert and Stephanie Stacy, I will swear you in. I saw I hear I saw me swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Am I supposed to repeat that? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're just supposed to. Yeah, I agree, do. agree with that. You know. Yes, sir. Do. So this is 57 Circle Drive. You placed the market value of two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars on the property. Uh, please explain your appeal to the to the board. Okay, um, we got, when we purchased this house uh, back in I think uh, January of 2019, and um, upon uh, moving in, uh, there issues were everywhere i mean it basically they got it whoever the because it was bank owned it was they painted it put a um pergo um not even pergo like laminate float not laminate but the micro board down in the kitchen in the hallway and called it a day uh nothing was replaced they did do the roof apparently and they put a new furnace in um i was uh, if I did put 214 on there, um, uh, I would probably say that was an error because uh, we feel that it was, uh, we got the reassessment back um, in February, or not the reassessment, the, re the initial assessment back in February of 2020. Um, and we didn't notice it in the mail because uh, we were at the hospital because my son was being born. And by the time we got home and kind of like calmed down and dealt with his jaundice and everything, we looked at it and we um, we missed the uh, right to appeal window. So in October, um, because dealing with a new baby, we didn't really realize it. Uh, back in October, when we uh, got our mortgage and it went up, um, like 120 bucks plus a month. Um, we called the town, we talked to Ian, um, and there obviously there's nothing we could do about the initial assessment, uh, but we got a reassessment, um, uh, the reeval, and it went up another $16,000 or whatever it is. So we were able to fight that. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm arguing that the initial 
uh, assessment was incorrect, then they added on to the reeval type of thing. Um, there's issues all over the house. I sent you guys uh, a, a PowerPoint with a bunch of pictures on it. Did you guys receive that? Correct. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, so starting with the issues, um, when we finally came into the house, there was a gas leak. So we had to replace uh, the gas line in the house, um, going to the stove. <clears throat> So, and then uh, there was a water leak in the kitchen with the plumbing, so we had to fix that. Uh, the uh, skylight in the bathroom um, leaks, and we didn't find that out until uh, I think it was one of the tropical storms that came through that year. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, we have two windows that are popped, so they didn't replace any of the windows. Uh, one of them is still popped in the front of the house. Uh, it's fog glass. The slider door w is uh, popped. Well, I actually replaced the slider door that was popped. Um, the shed, even though it's back there, it's not built on concrete or anything. It's uh, just on the ground, so the floor is rotting out. So I would say within the next like year or two, that's going to have to come down. Uh, the siding wasn't replaced or anything. It's all dented and pulled away from the house on the corners. The driveway is um, needs to be totally taken out and redone. Uh, the, the electrical in the house was all... Uh, the wires are all old. The plugs I've replaced, and in doing so, I've noticed that uh, in some of the outlets, they used underground wire that doesn't have a ground, that they just split the wire. And I took pictures of that as well. And that was in the kitchen. Um, the fireplace in the living room, um, it just has a flue that was left open. The insides were are rotted out, so I just capped it until I can get that replaced. Um, the, they did... The one um, permit that they did take out with the town when they did the renovations was just to put in a new HVAC system, uh, air conditioner and um, furnace. Uh, that was the only one that was taken out when they did the renovations. And um, getting back to my phone call with Ian back in October, excuse me, um, he said that in looking at the pictures online, and when he stepped into the house for me to sign the paper in January, he said that um, it was totally rented, like a totally gutted. And that was what he was basing his initial assessment off of. And during our phone call, um, or when I saw him last week at the town, I talked to him about it. And he's basically walked that back after looking at all the pictures. He was just like, well, you could see why I thought that, you know. So that's basically what we're going off of um is uh there anything else you want me to say <laughs> i mean looking at the property values in the area um the house right across the street is like just 200 square feet less than ours and their value or her value at 74 um circle drive is still at 215, uh, 215, six, let's call it. And, uh, you know, her tax uh, value is at 118.7 uh, around the corner at 19. Their house is basically the same size as ours. Uh, their value on the house is 224.3, let's call it. Two, four bedrooms, two baths. Their value, their tax assessment is at uh, 122 three um, so those are two houses in the area when we purchased this house they actually had to like go outside of 10 miles to find comparable, comparable homes to even look at because uh, this neighborhood is kind of all like with the single floor one level ranch no basements no garages on some of the houses it was it's just difficult for them to find so those are two on my block that or on my in my neighborhood that I saw. Uh, I mean, I have a list, and I think I included that list on the PowerPoint. So, and right now, you guys, um, 
Well, the reassessment value came up to 166.9. When I fought that assessment, they agreed and they just dropped it down to 159.8 for the assessment value. And, you know, from when we purchased the house, it was at, uh, it was at um, 120. So it's gone up like 40, almost, was what, 122? So it's gone up like $35,000 for a coat of paint and a new furnace and a new roof. That seems high to me. I'm not, and I understand that the market is skyrocketing right now because every because of COVID, everyone wants to get out of apartments, everyone's leaving New York. I understand that aspect of it, and you know, I'm just not convinced that the condition of the house is warranted of a, even a 159.8. Yeah, so it was reduced. Uh, during the informal appeal process from 238.4 to 228.3. Um, right. That's, that's the market value, correct? Uh, that's what they're saying, the market value. I kind of went around and searched the internet, and the market value was anywhere between 235 and 278 for the neighborhood. And I understand looking at the houses that were recently sold in my neighborhood, there's, they're a lot smaller and they went for a lot more. Um, but those, both of those houses were like completely gutted. And, and I watched that process play out. So uh, I don't, I didn't pull the, uh, those houses to see what permits or anything that they went with, but um, I watched the transition from my window. Okay. Um, um, so I think the board is, uh, look through the, your appeal, your pictures, your PowerPoint, the town's record, uh, um, your testimony. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me uh, ask the board members if they have uh, any motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion uh, on 57 Circle Drive to reduce the market value to 224000 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Looks like, you know, that's what you paid. And I think that's what we'll, you know, yeah. we'll bring it no, back. No, I, I totally agree. That's fair. And I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, I hope you guys stay safe and have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. And have a good one. Bye. Okay. Michael Schaff is on the line if you're interested in talking to me, sir. It's earlier than I was told, but I was given a message that I could call in. Mr. Shaw, hold on. We'll we'll uh, get right to it. Absolutely, sir. Uh, this Okay, the next hearing will be 2020-033. Michael Schaff. Yes. 1012 Clintonville Road. I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Uh, you I have do. placed the market value on the property of $200,000. See the attached explanation. Uh, please uh, tell us about your appeal. Okay, I'd ask the board's indulgence to li let me state the history of this property and what has happened here, sir. Uh, it will take a couple of minutes, but I will try to make the board understand what is going on. Uh, I bought this run at the time, a former rundown farm for property for my son many years ago for his family residence. I am a university-educated engineer. 
I bought this property under the name of Michael Schaff Incorporated, the name of my estate to be. I enclosed a copy of this from the Secretary of State. There is no corporation listed under that name. It's not a development company. This property was originally owned by a Wallingford pool builder who tried to divide it for development but could not because of no road access. My wife, my two sons, and myself demolished the defective in-ground swimming pool that I'd had, and I designed, redesigned the house structure such that the original farmhouse structure remained and the design became more up-to-date. I let my son and his family stay at this 50% finished house and told him to finish it on his own time in exchange for using it and, and owning it. My son worked for me and managed my business, a restaurant, La Mirage in North Haven. And his family ate at my restaurant daily since there was no kitchen in the house. This house only has the original 60 amp electrical service. I installed a new 200 amp underground electrical service from the railroad up to the transformer pad next to the house. The Wallingford Electric Company installed a transformer and pulled a new service wire to the transformer. I hired two licensed electricians from Nutmeg Electric. They're high voltage contractors that terminate the wires. Incidentally, Nutmeg Electric did a significant part of the terminations in the Wallingford Power Plant. When the electrical inspector, Mr. Chuck, Chuck Genovese, found out that I had not used his electrical contractor to terminate the wires, he told my son he would never approve the service. My son got into a heated argument with him and he told him that he would never approve the electrical service and there would no electrical service be brought to the house. The Wallingford Electrical Inspector next ordered the Wallingford Electric Company to reclaim the transformer from the property such that no service could be brought to the property. Next, during the drought, the well started to fail. The submersible pump was no longer covered with water and ran 24 hours a day and overheated and got damaged. My daughter-in-law took advantage of this and talked to my son into moving to Maine, where she grew up, and convinced my son that he, he no longer had to work weekends. Now I have a structure that is about 65% finished and 35% that is not done. The 35% that's not done is the kitchen, the pantry, the guest bedroom, the home office. There is no plumbing, electrical, or heat in any of these rooms, only framing and studs. There is no proper electrical service to the structure and now has no water service either. There is no landscaping. And the big thing, no certificate of occupancy, so it cannot be rented to anyone as a residence. Since this property can only be used for storage, it must be classified as a garage and not classified as a residence. Since it cannot be used as a residence to be listed as storage instead of residence, which would be significantly reduce the value and assessment. I hope to restart this stalled project this year and finish it, since the town now has a new honest electrical inspector. Then I will welcome the assessor to put a fair market value on this house when it is finished and ready for occupancy. I am not in the construction business. I only work on my own or family properties. I've taught my sons all of the construction trades that I learned from skilled tradespeople while I work for General Electric supervising their multi-million dollar construction projects for General Electric Engineering for 15 years. Some <laughs> Excuse me, I own some construction equipment but only use it on my own property not as a business for money corporation. The land that this house is on is not developable. It is landlocked by other owner properties on three sides and blocked by railroad on the fourth side. The only entrance to this property is over a railroad tracks over an unprotected crossing which eliminates it from being developed. The reevaluation contractor for Wallingford agreed with my statements and what he did was reduce the assessment that he had put on it from 355.8 to 341.8. I believe it should be reduced an additional $50,000 to 291.8.
that's my story, sir. And I'm glad to answer any questions. And uh, I know it sounds strange, but building inspectors are not always honest. They're always looking for something. And I, the, the one in North Haven, the electrical inspector, excuse me, the building inspector in North Haven, uh, everybody thought he was great too until uh, one of the uh, air conditioning contractors recorded him that he was looking for a free air conditioning in his house to approve somebody who worked at an air conditioning contractor. They, they fired him about a week later. Okay. I, I, mean, I, and, and I know it sounds kind of, so, I know it sounds, you know, but this is the history of the property and all of this can be verified. Correct. And, and I think uh, some of the same issues were, were spoken when we heard your last appeal within the last reval cycle. Um, so nothing's nothing's really changed or, or moved. Wait, wait when was this, sir? What, when was this, sir? Well, you, you were here with this property in the 2015 uh, reval cycle, so. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. I just want to. I had a. I had a personal property thing with you. Well, no, I, I. I. Re, I remember uh, your appeal on this property before. So again, it's all about property values of 10-1-2020. Um, you know, this size house with 17 acres in Wallingford. Um, yeah, but my son was. Excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt you, sir. My son was there at the time, and it was a residence. Now, he's gone, and I can't rent it to anyone. Well, I'm, That's I'm, big I'm, thing. it's not about renting it. It's about what's what the value is and would someone buy it. OK. And again, a thirty three thousand uh, thirty three hundred square foot house on 17 acres in Wallingford. Um, I don't think there'd be a problem selling the property. So in, in 508 300. You know. Um, uh, so he's got 5083. As a result of informal appeals process, the building was factored to reflect 66% complete, reducing the market value from 508 to 488. So I think 5083, if the house was finished on 17 acres, uh, is still uh, a, a good deal. So, but, sir, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir. But the big thing is, it can't. I you're saying sell it. You're not saying I can use it. I can't use it without a certificate of occupancy. I have right. to finish it correctly, sir. And that's what the big thing is. I can't rent it to anyone. So that devaluates it tremendously, sir. Well, we're looking at what the value of the house is if it was completed. Not about renting it. It's about what the value is. Theoretically, somebody would come along and pay you for that house. I'm not selling, telling you to sell it. I'm just telling you on the open real estate market that. Uh, but that's the total, sir, the property and the house that you're telling me, sir. Yes, that's what we're talking about. It's all, it's the, the, the 17 acres is, is the property that the house is on, correct? Yes, yes. yes. But I'm, you're, no. you're, you're factoring the property and the house into that value. The house doesn't have that kind of value, sir. Well, the assessor's office, vision, everybody, I mean, that's their job. They know how to value a piece of property, whether the house is finished or not. That's why they're reflecting a 66% complete. You even said 65% complete. So that, that's the truth. That's the truth. I, I'm true. not lying. Yeah. So they've placed the current market value of 488200 on the property. All right, at 65% complete. I, I am totally in agreement with that, um, with 17 acres and a 3,300 square foot house. In, in today's- yeah, you're, 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 you're saying that 17 acres has that much value to the property that it's not developable, sir. Well, maybe somebody doesn't want to develop it. Maybe somebody just wants 17 acres of property and a nice house. They're, you know, that's a target market for somebody in Wallingford like that. So I, I think that, I think, you know, the board has heard, we we see the, um, the uh, recommendations from the assessor's office. 
we see, you know, the information back from the informal appeal process. And uh, uh, I think the board can vote on what we have here. Okay. So. Now you're saying that you're going to override what your, the previous uh, uh, appeals contractor said? He reduced it to 341.8. That's the assessed value. I'm talking about the, the market value. Correct. The assessed value will be 341.8. The current, which is a reduction from the 2015 uh, reval number. So I'm going with, you know, I, I'm going with what the town is, is saying here. Um, 488.200 is the current market value. The current assessed value is 341.8. Okay, that's what the the uh, vision people that you sat with or talked with uh, and the assessor's office determined. I, and I'm in agreement with that. The, and do I hear something from the board? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, on hearing, num uh, hearing number 2020-033, no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, you'll be uh, notified uh, from the assessor's office with a letter. Okay, so we have um, Scott Cleary uh, as the last one. I was just on the phone with Mr. Cleary. Um, he's um, he's driving, but he's going to pull over and call in. Um, so he, you know, he said, "Give him five minutes." Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And that's that will be the last one, correct? So. According to my records, yes. Hello. Share. Hello. Hello, Mr. Cleary. Thank you for um, taking our call and 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 uh, joining us early. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is hearing number twenty twenty o twenty seven. Scott Cleary and uh, Elvira Cleary, five Lost Brook Lane, Wallingford. I'm going to swear you in. Okay. I always swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay. So uh, tell us about your uh, uh, appeals application. So I, I went through the process with Vision to do the phone um, appeal. And they told me that the assessment would be lowered to 274, um, which I, I didn't, I thought the assessment that they gave me was kind of in the ballpark, but I thought it was a touch high based on the condition the house was when I bought it. I bought it two years ago um, and, and they had kind of agreed because they told me the square footage uh, matched more of like the 274 range rather than the 281 range that it came in at. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of asking for that. Um, you know, the, the house was in considerable, needed considerable work when I bought it just two years ago. Um, so what work have you done to it? Well, I put a new roof on. We, we put um, 
we refinished all the floors and um, the and um, new paint, new everything. We put in a new walkway for um, you know for aesthetic purposes. So we tried to to keep up with you know the neighbors anyway. You don't have anything that in writing an email or anything that that no it was it was the phone assessment so you know i'm only based on what the the uh vision agent told me and um then when the assessment came back unchanged i figured i would go through this process kevin anybody have any record of of that uh with vision saying that or that would have been part of the informal hearing process, I believe. Yeah, on the phone. It was in December of uh, 2020. Yeah, it was the, the 19th or so of December. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so it must have been a phone appointment for an yeah. informal hearing. Okay. Yeah. I do so not have hearing paperwork in front of me. Yeah. So the house is 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 1473 square feet. Um and that uh, there's a house on on Summerwood that's kind of like in that same range that has a slightly lower assessment than mine. So you you've gone from an assessment of 19100 to 196900. You've gone up $6800 in assessed value. In assessments, yeah. And I was thinking that it would be more in the range of 191, 8, 192, somewhere in that range. I mean, something, you know, in the middle would, would kind of be, I think, reasonable. Again, the, and, and, and again, these prices are now uh, based on the, the October 1st, 2020 grand list. And, and of course, you know, the real estate market has um, been, uh, been very good. Yeah, but you don't know if, the, if that's a continuing factor or, you know, a, a bubble in, you know, just for the current time we're in so i i get that it's you know a long-term thing so okay uh based upon your appeal what you said about vision uh you know where you were where you, you know where you started and where you you wound up and all those factors um i think uh the board may have uh, some information and in, in, uh understanding and Maybe the board would like to make a motion. Mr. Chairman, to make a motion on hearing number 2020-027 to reduce the market value to 278,000. Mr. Avery, you're muted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Clary, we'll uh, be okay. sending you an up updated paperwork. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye. Right, bye. Thanks. I think that's the end of uh, all the hearings. Um, I I want to ask a question while we're we're still on the record here um, for Monday's meeting. So. Mr. Mulrady uh, needed to send back in some new, uh, some authorization letters and also some appeal uh, changes uh, with the Gavin properties were not identified correctly and who the owner, do, do we have those? You know? I, I believe we do. Um... Well, you know, you're right. Gavin had so many different entities. 
Shelly, do well, you recall if putting that in the in the package, those authorization letters? I, I did put a lot of authorization letters in there, but I'm not sh exactly sure. Okay, so I remember that there was an authorization letter that spelled out several different entities. So I believe on the Gavin stuff, I think he's okay. On the um, uh, Verna, which includes Gem Properties, I believe he's okay on that. And then um, there was one for Y and O. Uh, that one's yeah, yeah. The, the authorization, I mean, is it, fine, but there were some actual appeals that were um, had the wrong owner name on them. Mr. Chairman, I do believe that I saw some from Mr. Mulready. I believe he emailed some some of those things, and I did see that he changed. He changed the, the appeals to the correct property yes. LLCs. Okay. I, I just wanted to you know for Monday that that the paperwork is correct. That um, you know we're not voting on stuff that doesn't match the town records. And uh, okay, if you've seen it. Um, okay, so another question while we're still on here. Anything from Mr. Lo Lomate from last okay, night? Okay, so, all right, if I can, uh, Mr. Chairman, let me go back to Mulready and okay. let me finish up on that because I did call him and I, and I want to speak to him tomorrow. So Kevin seems to think he did new appeal applications. I don't think I saw those. So is that what you're talking about, Kevin? New appeals? No appeal well, forms? Appeals, yes. I believe they came in the next day. Okay. What did they, what did um, they say, amended on them or something? Uh, no, they weren't stamped as amended. His email indicated that he was submitting the forms with the correct owners. Okay, because my, my concern is, you know, the deadline date is February 20th. Now he's submitting it afterward. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I'm, I'll, I'll verify all of that tomorrow. Okay. But that was so what tonight it? we heard we heard is you know a, we heard the appeals that the appeal did not match the property right information. Right. So so just so I'm clear, what is the what does the board want? They want a new appeal that says amended on it with the with the current date or well, I want a new I want a new appeal with the correct LLC on it with the correct property owner on it okay all we're, right we're Thank voting you. on property that doesn't belong to that llc right that was one of the tasks you know that based upon listening to the appeals that he had to do get the authorization right. and straighten out the the um the appeal ownership name i believe he did address that no. i okay. recall that okay all right okay and, and then you want to talk about mr lomonte did we receive anything from him? Yeah, we received some a couple of pages for each property. I think Shelley could tell you better than I could. I looked at it; it didn't really. Makes it was sense. not an appraisal. It was, you know, it may have been a page out of an appraisal that he's working on, but they were not appraisals. He was still not complete on the appraisals. He was far from it, and uh, that's and he admitted that last night. Yeah. Not only that, the, the you know the market value on the appeal appeal is different than the market value he has talked about last night on uh, only only two four did not you know match up two did his his appraisal and the owner's market value. Uh, only matched on two of them. So correct. And I would so also add. Yeah. I would also add to the board that an appraiser does not perform an income approach on a two or a three family property. It just it just isn't done. <laughs> it's just you know for a property like that, it's sales or cost approach. If it's an older property. It's based basically sales. You know. So nobody would do an income approach on a two on a two unit house. Two two family home or three unit home. So okay, but but again, the the information was not available at the board hearing. So please take that into consideration. You know, if that information comes to us, we can look at it. We can look at what he's 
told us last night, but there's a mismatch. There's there's no information. There's late information. Um, you know, there were informal hearings that people could have gone to. There were, you know, deadlines uh, three days before last night. You know, the information was supposed to be in. So take that into consideration when when reviewing these for Monday night that we. Um, uh, when we vote, we uh, have accounted for uh, all of those deficiencies. And we'll make sure that the board gets an email uh, with any copies that he's sent in to us so that you can at least look that over during over the weekend. That would be fine. So uh, the next meeting is scheduled for Monday night at 6 p.m. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, I think we did good tonight. I uh, I appreciate uh, the work you did with Mr. Di Natale. That was the way it should be. Uh, yep. And uh, that was very good. So very smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth. Correct. Uh, that's that's what you get when you work directly with the owner of property and and the employees of the town. That's that's a good relationship. Um, I'm working out these differences. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Talk to you Monday night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.